Rim Country News brought to you by Jake's Corner Bar and Grill. Same stop, different horses since 1916. And by Terlucas and Brandt CPA PLLC, with a long history of providing quality CPA services right here in Rim Country. On this Tuesday, April 12th, for Tano TV, K Rim Radio News, and Global Trails Media, I'm Randy Roberson with your Rim Country News headlines. Well, Walter Harold Mitchell III, who's accused of dumping body parts around central Arizona, was scheduled to change his not guilty plea in the case on Monday. Instead, he opted to represent himself and go to trial. Mitchell is charged with 29 felony counts of concealing or abandoning a dead body. Authorities linked him to the remains found on the outskirts of Prescott in the late uh, December 2020 timeframe, and they did that through tags and medical gauze that accompanied them. Mitchell was living in Chino Valley, a two-hour drive north of Prescott, when he was arrested. He had moved there earlier in 2020 from Washington State, where he owned a business that managed cadavers for research. The remains that included arms, legs, and heads have been linked to nine people, according to Deputy Yavapai County Attorney Cassie Harris. Yavapai County Superior Court Judge Krista Carmen set Mitchell's five-day trial for late August into September after letting him know that he's responsible for all aspects of his defense, though she would appoint advisory counsel. Mitchell, who is 60, said he understood and considered himself a subject matter expert in the case. I've wanted to go to trial from the very beginning, he said. I've been very patient and I believe I can win at my trial. Now, Mitchell faces a maximum of more than 22 years in prison if convicted of all charges. He's being held at the Yavapai County Jail. Now, the prosecution uh, withdrew a plea agreement that would uh, have made it possible for Mitchell to be eligible for probation, but they've, again, they've pulled that. In other news, in a follow-up to what we reported yesterday, back in June of last year, the Backbone Fire ravaged a 41,924-acre area surrounding Fossil Creek. The U.S. Forest Service then closed the popular hiking and swimming area to the public, citing, quote, unsafe conditions associated with post-fire flooding, road damage, and downed power lines. Well, the closure order was written to remain in effect through December 31, 2022, or until rescinded, whichever occurs first. Well, so the Forest Service could have the opportunity to assess and repair the damaged areas. Well, Sean Golightly with the Arizona Daily Sun is reporting that, according to Forest Service Public Affairs Officer Brady Smith, Fossil Creek reopening in the fall of 2022 is possible, but not certain. The decision ultimately depends on the conclusions of ongoing safety assessments. Sean Golightly was invited to accompany Forest Service scientists on Monday into the Fossil Creek area and observe the state of its recovery. The goal was to bring back a better understanding of the current conditions, the ongoing safety concerns, as well as the science that helps determine if and when a burned area should be reopened to the general public. Now, as wildfires in the West remain an increasingly common threat, closures of popular areas like Fossil Creek are likely to become a more regular occurrence and a little understanding can stave off a lot of frustration. Now, under the leadership of hydrologist Kelly Mott LaCroix, the survey team met at the junction of Fossil Creek Road and Highway 260 east of Camp Verde. There, the crew split into high-clearance four-wheel drive vehicles to take the 14-mile dirt road into the closed area around Fossil Creek. From the onset, they said drivers had to contend with lumbering dump trucks, road graders, and other off-highway construction vehicles. Navigating the steep and winding blind corners uh, between the highway and the creek bed uh, was, they said, a chore of vigilant attention, often precarious when a massive construction vehicle forced one to veer onto the soft shoulder. Well, the reasons for the road maintenance are twofold, according to Mott LaCroix. 
pre-fire, there was a request to improve Fossil Creek Road as it had turned into a rutted washboard after years of heavy use. According to the U.S. Forest Service, accelerated use of that road was one of the reasons for implementing a permit system for Fossil Creek. Well, during summer recreation uh, uh, season, that grew from an estimated 20,000 visitors a day or 20 in a year in 2006 to approximately 86,000 visitors in 2015 with more than 43,000 additional vis uh, visitors turned away due to lack of parking. By 2021, road maintenance was long overdue. The Backbone Fire did not help the situation. Post-fire flooding contributed to road failure and blockage that had the potential to entrap users on the canyon-bound Fossil Creek Road. Well, coming up in Rim Country weather, a storm system moving across the western states today will continue to deliver strong winds to northern Arizona along with scattered rain and snow showers and a blast of cooler temperatures. Now you can look for a hard freeze at many locations Wednesday morning with teens in the mountains and 20s in the many of the uh, lower elevation locations. A complete report on what you can expect for the next seven days is coming up next. You're watching Rim Country News. Jake's Corner Bar and Grill. It's not just a bar, it's a destination. Jake's started out as an Arizona stage stop way back in 1916 and folks have been stopping here ever since. Jake's also has been famous as a popular stopping spot for travelers headed to Rim Country or Roosevelt Lake. But as more people discover this historic stop, more and more, it becomes the destination. It was even featured in the 2008 movie Jake's Corner and later featured at the Sedona Film Festival. Ice cold beers from the tap, imported or specialty beers, a generously stocked full bar and great food that keeps you wanting to come back again and again. Enjoy a game of pool inside or step out and enjoy the covered patio and outdoor bar with live entertainment and much more. We hope to see you soon at one of the most historic stopping spots in Arizona. Jake's Corner Bar and Grill. It's not just a bar, it's a destination. Hi, I'm Michael Dowling with the Old County Inn and Pinewood Tavern. So we've been using True Lucas and Brandt probably for the last four years. They've been really awesome to work with, um, Amy and Marguerite. They do everything now from pretty much all of our payroll needs, pay all of our taxes. They even help us uh, on Fridays to pick up our checks, which is great since they're local. But I pretty much use them for everything. They've been awesome to work with and they take off all the things I don't have to worry about as far as taxes go so I can concentrate on my business. But as for now, they're pretty much doing all of my personal taxes, all of our payroll needs, all of our business taxes, and very affordable and just awesome to work with. And they're local, so we really appreciate them and they've been a great partner with us so far. Well, taking a look now at your Rim Country seven day weather forecast, a low pressure system was moving across the western states during the early morning hours today with an associated cold front draped across the northwest uh, corner of Arizona. For today, the low will continue to head eastward with the cold front sweeping from northwest to southeast across the area. Stronger, damaging winds really haven't materialized, thankfully, like we said that they might yesterday. However, it will remain windy with southwest wind gusts of 40 to 60 miles an hour across much of northern Arizona through about 8 a.m. today. And then as the cold front continues to head southward, stronger winds will then become confined to the areas along and east of a line extending uh, through the Four Corners, Winslow, and Heber areas where wind gusts uh, could continue to be 30 to 50 miles per hour. Now the high wind warning currently in place across uh, northeast, uh, the northeast corner of Arizona could get downgraded to just a wind advisory later this morning. We'll have to just wait and see. As the cold front passes across the area, there will be a decent shot at a few showers, especially from the Mugion Rim northward. This system is coming in a bit drier than previously anticipated, so most locations are only going to see light precipitation, if any at all. And uh, then uh, things change a little bit more on Wednesday. The low pressure system moves eastward with the dry and cold air mass punching from north to south across Arizona. 
Now the main impact of this drier air is going to be strong radiational cooling before sunrise tomorrow. And that'll result in widespread hard freeze all over rim country. Locations above 6,500 feet are likely to see low temperatures in the teens with temperatures mainly in the 20s at the lower elevations. Consi you might want to consider protecting any of your more sensitive plants and, and even outdoor plumbing for that matter, depending on where you live. From Thursday onward, a mild westerly flow will develop across the southwest states. You can look for warmer temperatures under this mild air mass with pressure gradients and daytime vertical mixing nearly guaranteeing breezy conditions each afternoon. Now a passing weak short wave disturbance could throw a few windy days into the mix with the next best chance for stronger winds coming in Saturday and Sunday. Meanwhile, highs and lows around rim country today, well, they should be looking something like this. In Payson, you can expect a slight chance for a shower or two in the morning with winds gusting over 25 miles an hour. Then the clouds will gradually give way to sunshine this afternoon and the high in Payson should be near 58 degrees. Tonight, it's going to be a nippy one with winds still gusting around 20 miles an hour and with a, a pretty frosty low near 28. That'll make the wind chill feel like about 15 degrees tonight in Payson. Even more so up on top of the rim at Forest Lakes, they still have that uh, high wind warning in effect through five o'clock this afternoon. Now they too have a chance for uh, some light showers or two uh, this morning, but with winds gusting to around 43 miles an hour, their forecast high of 46 is still gonna feel a lot colder. Tonight, under clear skies, the low will plummet to a chilly 18 degrees, but with winds still howling and uh, doing so around 24 miles an hour, up on top of the rim tonight, outside it's gonna feel like about three degrees. So be sure to plan accordingly if you're headed up that way. Now down south in the deserts of Tano Basin here where I come to you from today, 69 is the forecast high today. Quite a contrast from a high in the 90s just a couple of days ago. But with vertical winds uh, gusting up to 30 miles an hour, it's going to feel a little bit cooler. Tonight, those winds will still be blowing around 25 miles an hour, making that low in the basin tonight of 38 well, it's going to make it feel a lot more like 20. So get those long pants on once again. <laughs> and that's what's happening around Rim Country. For Tano TV, KRIM Radio News, and Global Trails Media, I'm Randy Roberson. Make it a great Tuesday.